Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northville Church of Christ in Northville, New Jersey. I would like to welcome you to the evening services of our church for Sunday, uh, February the 12th. We'll sing a few songs. We'll uh, have the Lord's Supper. And I have a message for you that I hope will be enlightening and beneficial to all of us. Uh, we sing from Songs of Faith and Praise at Northville. Uh, if you have that book, that's great. I'll give you the number. If you don't, I'll give you the title so that you can either Google it or if you have another book with the song that you can sing along with us. We are going to start by singing number 144, an old song. It's called, Oh, Worship the King. Oh, Worship the King. <clears throat> Oh, worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills in the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end, our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. That was great. Uh, if you will turn to number 239, the title of this song is In Moments Like These. 239, In Moments Like These. <clears throat> In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my voice, I lift up my voice to the Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. In moments like these, I sing out a song, I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands, I lift up my hands to the Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord, singing, I love you, Lord, I love you. Before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 763, O Master, let me walk with thee. 763. O oh, Master, let me walk with thee. <clears throat> o oh, Master, let me walk with thee in lowly paths of service free. Tell me thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. Help me the slow of heart to move by some clear winding word. 
word of love. Teach me the way what the to stay and guide them in the homeward way. In hope that sends a shining ray Far down the future's broadening way In peace that only thou canst give With the O Master, let me live as we gather about the Lord's table, uh, we see in the emblems before us a hope that sends a shining ray far down the future's broadening way. Uh, in it, we find the peace that only our God can give in that at just the right time, uh, God chose to send Jesus and um, as the master teacher and the uh, divine son of God. He also took the form as son of man. He felt the pain that all men feel. He felt the anguish. He felt the temptations. Yet he was sinless in his walk here on earth. And when he did die on the cross, he died for our sins. He died that our sins might be forgiven. He died that you and I might have a chance for eternal life. And so as we gather about the table, help us to remember the pain and the agony suffered by our Savior on that terrible cross. And uh, as we partake of this bread, let's think of how excruciating the pain was in his body. Let's pray. As we have all experienced pain, we can't even imagine the pain that Jesus must have felt on so many levels as he was nailed to the cross. And so as we partake of this bread, we think of the body that was so horribly mistreated for those hours that he spent on that cross, an innocent one, yet uh, as a uh, substitute for our sin, he died that we might live. As we partake, let's remember that broken body. We ask this in Jesus' most holy name, amen. We know that uh, blood is the life-giving substance that runs through our bodies. It carries all the necessary things to and fro. And as it does, uh, it is uh, encapsulated within our body and designed to stay there. Jesus shed his innocent blood. Uh, the blood poured from his hands, from his feet, from his head, from his side. But there was something special about that blood, much more special than ours. It is the blood of our salvation. It is the blood of our forgiveness. So as we partake of this fruit of the vine, let's think of the blood that Jesus shed for each one of us. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that Jesus was willing to go to the cross. We're so grateful that he was willing to shed that innocent blood, though he was indeed innocent. We just pray that we can be worthy of that sacrifice and that we will understand the significance of the blood that he shed. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, as we gather about this table to understand that Jesus' blood was shed for us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We have chosen this time, as the Lord's Supper has ended, to remember that uh, we are also commanded to lay by in store on the first day of the week and give back to the Lord. We pray that the stewards of this money will be just stewards. The monies will be used to uh, evangelize the money. The monies will be used to help those in need. Help us to understand that, that uh, God loves a cheerful giver 
Help us to give with gratitude. Help us to give with the cheerfulness that we ought to. Let's pray. We pray to Heavenly Father that you would bless us in our giving. We pray that uh, you would uh, just uh, help those that use these monies to use them in such a way that your work here on earth would be fulfilled, that the Great Commission would be uh, in some way satisfied that we would go into all the earth and preach the word. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. The last song that we will sing is number 579. 579. It's called Praise the Name of Jesus. 579. Praise the Name of Jesus. Let's sing it through twice. <clears throat> Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. I hope you enjoyed uh, the song service. I hope you were able to uh, participate with us. Uh, it is our duty uh, to praise the Lord whenever we can. It is our duty to sing praises to him because he deserves those praises. If you were there this morning, you heard that the title of our lesson this evening would be Improving My Attitude. Uh, we've all heard about <laughs> having attitude adjustments. We've all heard about having a good attitude. I'm going to use a secular man uh, as our example uh, this evening. Uh, and he was a, an interesting, interesting man. His name was Victor Frankel. Now, you may have heard of that name. Victor Frankel uh, was a uh, psychiatrist and a neurologist who was born in 1905. Interestingly enough, it was the year my father was born. He lived to uh, 1997. He lived a life of 92 years. But interestingly enough, he was an Austrian Jew. And when it came time uh, to be uh, put into the concentration camps, Frankel, along with many others, despite the fact that he had raised himself to a rather high station of life, was sent to the concentration camps. He wrote a book. Uh, the book uh, that he wrote uh, was uh, In Man's Search for Meaning. In Man's Search for Meaning, upon his death, the Library of Congress and the Book of the Month Club said that this book, written in 1946, was one of the most 10 influential books ever written. It was translated into 24 languages, and over 10 million copies of the book have been sold. And I would just like to use Frankel as an example because part of the book chronicled his days in the concentration camps. Here's one of the things that he observed that I thought was very, very unique. He said this, We who lived in concentration camps can remember the men who walked through the huts comforting others, giving away their last piece of bread, 
They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a man. But one thing, the last of human freedoms, and that is to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. We get to choose our attitude. We get to choose our own way. His message was a message of hope. After he uh, got out of concentration camp, he founded the School of Logotherapy. And it, uh, logo means uh, learning. And it, it was a, a psychology type of book. I would like to share with you some of his famous quotations among them. For the world is in a bad state, but everything will become worse unless each of us does his best. The point is not what we expect from life, but rather what life expects from us. Happiness cannot be pursued. It must ensue. Those who have a why to live can bear with almost any how. The meaning of life is to give life meaning. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to say, change ourselves. And finally, one of his quotations that uh, my lesson will be based upon this morning is, our greatest freedom is the freedom to choose our attitude. To choose our attitude. To choose our outlook on life. Now, you know what? <laughs> if we look at Frankel as a man who spent three years in concentration camps, uh, we may have forgiven him if he would have displayed a bad attitude. But since I have read you some things about the man, he obviously did not do that. As a prisoner in Nazi concentration camp, he was witness to some of the most indescribable horrors in human history. How then did Frankel avoid the fate of pessimism, avoid the fate of bitterness? Because he wrote, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, and that is to choose one's attitude in any set of circumstances, to choose our way. And so with that, I, I would give pause and let you think about that for a minute. Our attitude is a matter of choice. Hmm. Few, unfortunately, ever come to that realization. They, many of them, merely take the mood that comes with the events of their day and they react accordingly. It's kind of like the difference between joy and happiness. Happiness depends on circumstance. Joy is something that we should have all the time. And so if I'm driving along and someone caught, cuts me off in traffic, I'll be in a foul mood for a while. However, if I am in the workforce and I get a promotion to a higher paying job, I might be uh, out of this world, stay out of my way. I'm on an upward path. And so with that in mind, let's take the biblical aspect of all of this. How can a person do to test Frankel's theory about choosing our own attitude. And so 
I would like to share with you a few things, a few biblical things about our attitudes. What can a person do to choose their own attitude? Well, I would consider first, if we look at Acts chapter 13 and verse 22, in that verse, they are talking about David's attitude. And God concluded that David was a man after his own heart. I would take that to mean that David chose his attitude even though he had warts, even though he had some foibles, even though he did sin, he understood and he realized. And then he was willing to change his life. He was willing to change his attitude about things. And so some of his writings reflected that change in attitude. And it was always a change for the best. Because all the way here in the book of Acts, the writer says that he was a man after God's own heart. We can only be a person after God's own heart if we walk through life with the proper attitude about how we live. And so I would like to list just a couple of things. And I tell you what, you can listen to this lesson and you may come up with some of your own. You might even want to share those with me. First, in choosing our attitude, we can practice praise. And again, David did this in Psalm chapter 34 and verse 3. He said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let me exalt his name together. Wow, what an attitude on life that David had. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. He, he wanted to take you and I along on the ride. Magnify God's name with me. Exalt his name together. You know what? It's why we chose to sing these songs Today, we sang these songs in praise of our Lord. We ought to practice praise. Singing is one of those. But we can practice praise in more ways. We can practice praise when we take time to realize how much greater God is than the problems of the world. And if we do that, we'll be encouraged. Frankel was in a concentration camp for three years, seeing indescribable things. Yet he wrote a book dealing with the meaning of life. A book that has sold 10 million copies from the depravity of this terrible place because he chose to have the right attitude in life. Life won't seem to be as dismal as it is to people sometimes. When one who is a child of God understands that he's the child of the all-knowing, omnipotent Father. And with that, we ought to practice praise. Praise of our God. Second on my list is to try thankfulness. Again, we can go back to Frankel. Can you imagine him saying, oh man, I'm so thankful that I've been exposed to all this in the concentration camps. In Psalm 103 and verse 2, King David gave this admonition. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Try thankfulness. Try giving thanks to the Lord. Now, if you go to Psalm 103 
And this was verse 2. Afterwards, David lists some of those blessings. It will work for us. There is a song that we sing that says, Count your many blessings, name them one by one. When we count our blessings, we remember that God has not forgotten us. You know, it, it doesn't mean that some rain will not fall into our lives. It doesn't mean that all of our times are going to be ups. There will be some down times. But when we realize that we serve an all-knowing God, we need to be thankful for the blessings of life. We need to be thankful that God has not forgotten us. We just observed the Lord's Supper. Jesus came into a sinful world to die for the sins of man. Jesus gave himself up that we might live. Let's try thankfulness. Not only should we observe the Lord's Supper, but as we do, we should be thankful for God's great plan. And remember that every day, God's mercies toward us are rich because we get on many levels, not what we deserve, but we get the mercy that comes with all our almighty God. Third on my list, and you've, uh, maybe you won't get this, but uh, I would say, I, I'm going to put it this way, put on the blinders. You know what blinders are? Uh, sometimes they put them on horses. Uh, some horses have to run with blinders because things outside of them in their periphery distract them. And so in some cases, what the trainers do, they want the horse to be focused straight ahead. And sometimes we need to do that. Here again, listen to the words of David in Psalm 101 and verse 3. He said, I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. Do you get the idea of putting on blinders? We live in an evil world. I know that. There's, there's much in the world that needs improvement. All we have to do is turn on the news. And in today's world, it's a 24-hour cycle. It's not news at 6 or not news at 11. It's news at every minute, every time. And more of it is negative than positive. Even politicians have learned that a negative message is better to suit their purposes than a positive message. And with that in mind, we need to break out the blinders. Sometimes we, we don't need to be blind to what's going on in the world. We need to not allow it to affect us in a negative way. Our TVs are filling us with images of problems and scenes of wickedness. Would, would our, our attitudes be better would they be better if we focused our minds on things that were better? You know, in the, in the computer world, there is a, a, a saying. You, you computer people know it better than I do. It's called garbage in, garbage out. It first applied to computers. But you know what? It also explains bad attitudes that people might have. How do I get away from having that bad attitude? Well, if we turn to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, Paul hits the nail directly on the head. He said, finally, brother, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence, if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these 
things. When we fill our minds and our hearts with the good things, the blessings of life, we put blinders on to help us to realize that God has blessed us so richly. You know what? Christians are supposed to dwell on those good things. We're supposed to demonstrate attitudes that are markedly different than the attitudes of people of the world. Jesus summed it up, and it's where we will finish the lesson this evening. In John chapter 15 and verse 11, he said, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that joy may be full. Ask someone close to you, does my joy show? Does my joy show? Do people know that I'm joyous? If it doesn't, it's time for an attitude change. It's time for a different outlook on life. It's time to practice praise. It's time to try thankfulness. And it's a time to break out the blinders and help us to understand, to get rid of the evil and let our minds dwell on that which is good. I hope that this message was beneficial to you. I will end it with an invitation. If you have not come to the Lord, if you've not been obedient to the Lord's will, if you've not confessed Jesus as the Son of God, repented of your former lives, and been baptized in the mission of your sins, we offer you this invitation this evening. If you need to come to the Lord, uh, and now is the time, you can just get in touch with one of us, and we will be there for you. Let's close in prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the time that we had together this evening to sing songs of praise, to absorb, observe the Lord's Supper, and just to reflect on a few things that should be important to us. Help us to improve our attitudes day by day. Help us, dear God, to understand that, that uh, our outlook on life is so reflective of the blessings that you have showered us with. Continue to be with us. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, that we might uh, show to all those around us that not only are we happy to be Christians, that we're proud to be Christians, and we hope that we could share that message through our joy with others. Be with us this evening. Help us to look forward to the next time that we are together. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Have a very, very pleasant evening, and may God bless you all. Oh,